Virginia for the slides because we he did it for the library and uh, we asked him for it and she found them for us and gave them to us a bit earlier this year so that's what we put together I've added to it I'll, I'll take a little liberty I've added to it because he just showed you a slide of part of a building but he never showed you the whole building so you may not recognize that part so I went through his pictures and pulled out almost every building in another shop that he found and put in here. And once he didn't have, I went around and took a picture so you could see the whole building as it is today. Now some of the buildings you'll see with what they looked like in 1960 or 1970 when Joe took the pictures. And so, but so I, I hope you don't mind I took a little liberty with that. <laughs> um, so I'll try to get it going here. Oh. He and out to be out in 63, and he said demolished in the late 60s, and that one is a nun's locker out there, and I can't read that, it's too small. But as I said, this is a collection that was put together by Joe that he gave to the library many years ago. Thanks to Bonnie, she remembered this, and that's why we asked Virginia if we could use them. A step on uh, Curtis and Joseph Hill, the author of this. And Stell was, I've got her from what Joe says here, very curious why he wanted to know so much about Savannah <laughs> and everything. And so Mary Sparks helped Joe get in comfortable with Estelle. And he said she finally gave permission to take a picture. She's 95 in this picture. I don't know when this picture was taken, but I would say many years ago. So here's a source of a lot of the information about Savannah that Joe's put together. Here's our first picture. Where's it at? Huh? Yeah. Some people know it as the shoe pass. Oh, yeah. Some people know it as the Dunn House. <laughs> and then for a while, Joe called it my house. <laughs> so, and I, you know, I couldn't reach up high enough to get all that painted with the ladder, because I had to have a ladder that went to the ground to clear up, and I didn't have one. But there's another shot he had of it. And then there's the whole house. Rick, uh, who owns it now? A guy by the name of J.R. Cunningham owns the house now. I sold it to him uh, 11 years ago. And the only sad thing I don't like about the house is he's taking the old windows out and putting in modern windows. And these windows still have the bubble glass in them from 1885. And that's what Jerry said, the Dunn House later known as the Shoot House. Who's this? Who said that? Okay. Oh, Sharon. There he is. In the little porch on the municipal building there. Was there ever a big organ in the Opera House? Was I'm sorry? Was there a big organ in the Opera House? Somebody asking that the other day. I don't know. Okay. I didn't know if they used it for plays or uh, maybe a pipe or I mean, someone was asking me like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember seeing one. That's not saying there isn't one in Joe's because I maybe what looked specific before that. I put the two in here. One shows the drawing of it with the block and the other shows the action there. Yeah. Rick Roger and I had talked a little bit about whether there was some organs or not. Yeah. I remember, like yesterday, being in front of the bank, the uh, First National Bank, and 
somebody was playing Christmas music through some negatives. Anybody remember anything about that? It was sort of in the 55. In Watershed Play? Yes. Well, do I, do I, do I remember that Walter Sheep used to play Christmas music? Yeah, Christmas time. And what was in the National Bank where he sat at? I don't know. I think I'm not sure. Wait, can you say yes? What was that? Yes, I thought he played the first National Bank. Okay. But that was way That would have been a 55 Later on. That's what Jim said. Okay. I think Walter passed away in about 58 or 59. I think. But I've heard people say that he did play music uh, for people here. Where's this one? Looks like the Charlotte Cage house. Who? Charlotte Cage on Washington Street. I don't know who lives there now. Well, let's see. That good of one. There's the house today. Joe called it the coal house. Yeah, the coal house. Um, I couldn't find the house. This was when he didn't have a picture of it later on, and I had to go around town driving and find it, looking for the <laughs> windows in the top. When I delivered groceries there, Mrs. Stump and her daughter lived there, and had two cold furnaces in that house to keep it warm. When I was a kid, I think her name was Charlotte Petty. I think her husband was a postmaster somewhere. But not like a local, he was more of a regional part of the post office. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, in Joe's picture, it was yellow. Mm -hmm. In this one, it's gray now, but mm -hmm. it changed the color or something. Uh, the guy that he ran the sewer plant. I can't think of this one. Dusty Parker. Yeah. Dusty lived there for a while. They lived there and redid the site and the windows. Where's this? Someone say Methodist? It is. There's another picture of it. And there it is. Yeah. And I would say... I saw that. Yeah. Cornerstone uh, sits 63, so Jim took this right after the church was finished. What did they do with the bell? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's in that room right beside us. Over there. We're going up here and put it up in front. Over here? All right. Okay. Yeah. They're going to see it. Sure looks different today. Yeah. Boy, you're quick on that one this year. You must have learned from last year. <laughs> nobody could figure it out last year. Because I, I zero in the little thing on the top of the tower there. That little fennel thing. Yeah. What's going to happen to the for sale again? I'm sorry? In the Sarah Bird's house for sale again? The Sarah Bird's house, is it for sale again? Yes, it's for sale. Uh, and this says this was done for, during uh, Heritage Day in 2002. I think it's going to need uh, some work to do on it because I don't think they've done much yeah, I'm sure. physical work on it to <laughs> keep it up. Yeah. 
I wondered. I showed some people and they couldn't figure out where it was. But it's the Derbyshire house. Can someone tell me, did Dick Schubert buy it off of Derbyshire's? Yes. And then his grandson, Rob, follows there. Right. And then Rob moved to Wilmington and uh, another descendant of Richard Schubert and Lee are moving in the house. Okay. So they're keeping that in the family. Well, I didn't think there was anyone in between Derbyshire's and Schubert's. I thought they got it from them, but I wasn't sure. I don't remember Rose Derbyshire. A lot of people say they didn't remember her. Oh, yeah. Remember her and her packer that delivered milk in her packer? Right. I'd yeah. like her people say, but I don't yeah. remember but her. But she had the, the gal that lived with her to care of her, and she milked for her. Yeah. And the, she, the Rose delivered the milk to the people who, who got it. She was, and she parked wherever she wanted to park on the streets. Everyone knew her car, knew her. So they just drove her around her. You never heard many complaints about it, but she just stopped and parked wherever she wanted to. Yeah, she was one of a kind. <laughs> and you know that there, I don't believe there's a picture of her or of her husband, either one of really? those pictures. I don't know, I've never seen a picture of him, but I, I think I've seen pictures of her. Well, I remember her well. Maybe it I'm might sure. have been, there might be some incident in pictures of some ladies' groups or From something. Some groups, yeah, they probably are. They probably are. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember her well. Yeah, that's, I, and I label it as Sauber Sharp House. In fact, what's the name of the lady who used to live with her? I can't think of her name now. Uh, she that was from uh, down at, uh, not Greenfield, Montreal, on there somewhere, because I remember my mother and I were down there to have a mess with her and had lunch with her some <coughs> one day. After Rose was gone, she moved back to her hometown. Yeah. What church is this? It is the Grand Church. There's the tower. The only change to this church, it was built in 1980, was the addition on back in, was that in 56? 58? How did you hear you, Jenny? 58, maybe. Okay, I knew it was sometime in the late 50s. And they just added the bathrooms and the kitchen on in the back. Though I should say it's not original because the original windows were not stained glass. The true Quaker meeting, it's not a church, it's a meeting, uh, had plain glass windows in it. It didn't like adorning them. But these were put in, in around the 1920s sometime. Because then, it was a very large congregation, a very wealthy congregation. Almost hardware. Where? The milk place? Who? Well, you might know. <laughs> this one's right beside it. Yeah. And you may be saying the name of where it's at, and I just don't know that name for it. Well, it's called the Maddox Building, wasn't it? Huh? Maddox Building? Was that the Maddox Building? Maddox Building? I don't never hear heard that one. Doc West used to have his name is on the window there. And that's where Mandy had his office and everyone else had his office in there. White paint would make, make that look good again. Oh.
Yeah, it was the men's hotel in Sabina. Yeah, it's on Howard Street. What block was it in? What, what block? Uh, it was on North Howard there. Yeah, it, it, it had a name on it. Was it Kennedy? I don't remember what this is the line of hotel from me. It's the Darbyshire building. Really? It was built by the Darbyshires. I wish Yeah. <laughs> and that's when Napa was there and Butch's was next door to it. Well, they used to call it Carson's, but it was Butch. Did the Napa store, was that? Napa store was there. Was that? Huh? Post office. It's post office. Yeah, yeah before the Napa store. Yeah. 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 No, that building stone. Oh, it's That's the building we tore down. Uh, there. Oh, yes, he's yeah. in Tommy Thompson's building, yeah. yes. Across the street. Across the street. This is all the Darbyshire block. Mm -hmm. Where? Oh, that's your bedroom. <laughs> So you had a perfect balcony there, didn't you, Susan? You had a perfect balcony there, look. We used to smoke out there, too. Got to be good And this is one of Joe's from 1968. Masonic Hall, the Ontario Masonic Bank Building. No. No. I I say it's beside where the the barber shop is now, but where the Masonic Lodge is now. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I want the barber shop. Yep. Yep. Bartlett's was there for a while. Down there off next to the railroad tracks or close to the railroad tracks, across the front street there. Yeah. The old loose lodge. Oh, yeah. Before they tore it down and built the new one. This was the Kennedy block. Miller's five and ten. Miller's. Yeah. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on. Hurry up. There you go. Miller's. And when I was growing up, that was Johnson's dry cleaner. Yeah. On the right side. On the right side, yes. Miller's was on the left. I'm sorry. There were apartments about, yeah. Um, on this, on the right side, there's one apartment that was the whole side. On the left side, the, the, the apartment was in basically in the front, and you went back the hallway, and there was another little apartment in the back behind the one on the left. They did. Ada Lynch lived in the little apartment in the back. Aria Johnson lived in the one on the left in the front. Stanley's mother, Stanley had the dry cleaner. And at that point, Stanley and Burns lived upstairs. 
when they had to drive in and there. They lived in the left from the right side. But then they moved out, and I'm sure Arnold Loretta was in there after that. Uh, the other reason, I was upstairs in that apartment on the left many times because uh, Aria Johnson owned the farm where we lived. And that kind of bought it off of her. She lived to be almost 100. But she didn't live there. She went to the nursing home. The family moved to Amherst, Ohio. So did Rittenhouse have a baby shower? Um, Connie's shop was across the street where, right next to Foster's, where Foster's used to be. Connie's shop was over there, close to Foster's. Where Foster's were the second, but they, Foster's started yeah, out Foster's there, street. right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, the last where they were the last time. Yeah, and then they moved across the street. Yeah. Part was next to next to uh, shoot house. Part was next to the shoot house. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know if I ever have the name for, but yeah. The building on the end is the current the current building. There, there's what they look like today. Uh, 
the jail. And they used to play basketball. Oh, I gotta go, oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. I, this is what I was gonna say here. I thought there's another one. This is when, people, when they took Cecil's down to build the new library. Joe took a picture of the building yeah. there. Yeah. I cut out the part where Cecil's was. Oh, yeah. And that's where they used to play basketball before they ever built a gym at Sabine. Right. Yeah, they play upstairs there. Yeah. Well, wasn't that the farmhouse for a while, yeah, too? Yeah, the farmhouse. Yeah. Well, it was underneath. Yeah, it yeah. was down the first floor at the same time. Right. They, they used it upstairs. For the, they went by the outside stairway. Down there on the low right was yeah. the farmhouse. And the boy, that used to be our Boy Scout room in the front where we kept tents and we didn't have meetings there, but we kept all of our tents and still all of our camping. Now that you mention that, I remember that. That's where we would go for our Boy Scout meetings. <laughs> Bob, I think Rob Nice. Yeah. Bob Wilson said he started playing basketball when he was in high school there, and then he got to also play in the new gym. He was one of the first okay. to play in the new gym in Salina. But I just thought many of you would not recognize that no. because it's been gone so long. Yeah. How many times does the firehouse burn day? Hardly ever. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. And this was a picture was when did they tear the Cecil's down to build the library? Early 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. Don't they built the library yeah, in the early 80s? Right. 84 okay. Yeah. 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 That's a longer map. Yeah, I gave that one away, didn't I? <laughs> no, I actually. Yeah. <laughs> What was that the used to have way? three floors to it. None that I know of. It does and says. You can still barely read on the sign out front where it says Duds and Suds. Okay. Yeah. What did it say? Duds and Suds. Duds and Suds. Oh, well, long before that, you know, it was an antique shop. And that was, before that, it was auto sales. Okay. Yeah. And in the collection at the museum, there's a picture of that where it had three floors and uh, all the carriages and everything from Littleton's was lined up down that street. Oh, yeah. So I've seen that picture somewhere. Yeah. 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 Really 
that we ought to thank Joe and Stell and Mary for saving a lot of these pictures because all, all these buildings are gone today. Oh, yeah. Well, now, you say it was on the alley, not on the street, on the yeah. side of the street. It's right on the alley. Yeah. There's an empty lot there. Yeah. 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 It's an empty lot there now. Oh, okay. From the oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I like this because the bay window like that. Yeah, a uh, nice architectural yes. And did it have that famous tin roof? Yeah. Yeah, from the Tally Crew. Tally Crew. Yeah, Tally Yeah. Tally yeah. Tally yeah. Tally yeah. yeah. This was called, he, Joe called it the McCann House. I didn't know if he wanted to do that or not. That's what Joe called it. Anybody? Somebody did hit the nail on the head. It's gone now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who had their, who had their, was it auto repair in there? Uh, the vendors don't sell CDs and stuff in the box. Right, the ramps. So I can take it like those. Huh? Brian, Lorraine, so audio. Did Brian, was it Brian in there for a while? This is the only picture of it as it's being torn down. In 2002. Well, didn't Debbie Mills have something in there? In this end. Huh? Cincinnati, and he'd take a bunch of kids down there and buy, get the cars and tell them, head, go head home and don't let them die. <laughs> well, that's why I said I'd never heard that story before. But kids driving Model T's yeah, back then. Yeah. You didn't have to drive drivers on. No. <laughs> but he used to go over there. You know what? He the well, last thing he used that building for a while he still does is he would go over there and crack nuts because he had a stroke. He couldn't use the one arm. And he had this little thing that he had made and put together. And he would do it with a foot pedal in his hand. And he cracked nuts and, and then picked them out and gave them to us. She said, LB, after LB had his stroke, he'd go down there and crack nuts and give the nuts to people. Yeah, he had this little... Thing that he could do it with one hand. Yeah. To, to, he was only able to use one yeah. hand, and he could it with one hand. But it made something that made it easy for him. Well, this says here, Elby had a seat business in there. The post office was in one of the rooms up to the right in the early 1900s. And the Spine Tribune was in the right room until it ceased publishing in the 40s. Yeah. 
Sorry to see the building gone. The Masonic Hall. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what said it was the original of the Oddfellas building, and then Masonic took it over after the Oddfellas ceased existence in the Bible. This is one, this is a small one, small Oddfellas building. In Wilmington, there's the big building on the corner as you go in right downtown, the big corner on the right where Fairleys was all those years. That's the that's the Oddfellas building there, and there. It's three or four stories high. And it had a gym, it had a gymnasium and everything in the upstairs. Whose law office is that little white building? Kenny's Stone. Kenny Stone's office. And you can see Dr. Fisher's, the, his office, Dr. Fisher's office, was there where Kenny Stone was. I went in there a lot of times. Well, when I was little, this was Cummings Drugstore. Yeah. On the side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was Eric. Yeah. Harry and Eric's before that. Harry Eric before. <laughs> yeah. And I got a bottle from Harry Eric's Drugstore yeah. off of eBay Is that a couple right? years ago. Oh, says Eric Drexler. Yeah. When I was a teenager, we, well, huh? when I was a kid, we walked this pretty Saturday night and we in there and got ice cream. Yes. So. This would get to the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the side of it. What you saw in other was the front. This is Side next to the alley. And there's what it looks like today. Yeah. The tallest building in Sabina. And that's the Sarah Rose house is, which is taller. It might be. I don't know, maybe because it's got three stories. I've heard it called the tallest building in Sabina, but I don't know whether that had to do with private homes or not. Maybe just that sound. I don't know. I, I think the roof on the uh, Mason Oddfellas Hall is taller than this. Oh, you think? The roof. It might be. I don't know. Um, Joe had written on, on in his little caption with this. Go oh, back, go back, go back, go back. Yeah, that back. Give it up here. That was an overall stack here. That is <laughs> yeah. uh, current. Was it PJ? Yeah. He had an overall factory there. Right. At Christmas time, he would go up into the upstairs and throw pennies out the window. For children. For, for kids mm -hmm. at Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Ned, we have to go preserve the nice one. I think they stopped. I gave this one away. Yeah, I gave this one away. <laughs> yeah, this is Milton's garage. That's uh, uh, it's uh, Bill Bowen's place up on uh, Washington. Which Methodist church was it? Protestant? The MA. MP? There's another picture of it. And there's what it looked like as a church. But this is what most of us remember. Yeah. Bill Mullins. Yeah. And Jim Morris and Barbara lived in an apartment. Yes. Yes. He, upstairs the he said Barbara and Jim Morris lived in an apartment up there after they got married. Oh, yeah. 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 And there was a dentist. Yeah. Jack Gaylor is a dentist. Oh, Dr. The dentist office there, yeah. Lady Joanne, the beauty shop. Beside the symposium. 
And today, I think it's a picture that we have Subway. <laughs> There's another picture of it. You should see how big the building was. Rick, we were just talking about, you see the building back there that's going now, the house. And it just dawned on me what it was. The Mankers had that restaurant there. Does anyone remember their Mankers? Mankers? Mankers. Uh huh. That's the other restaurant. No, but I remember seeing that name in Joe's pictures. Yeah, that just Mankers. Said the name.